Welcome back to another Q&A video. Hope all of you are doing well and I look forward to answering your questions. So let's get started. I've been training calisthenics for a few months now, just focusing on pull-up and push-up variations. Should I incorporate direct arm work in addition to what I'm already doing? All right, well, obviously what you're doing right now is going to give you bigger arms, especially if you start focusing on the gymnastic exercises, right? So I would expect good development from that. However, yes, adding additional arm work can benefit you greatly. Like, I don't see why you wouldn't add arm work, especially if you have access to weights or bands or something that you can isolate with. Why not? Is it going to harm you to do a set of bicep curls and tricep extensions at the end of your calisthenics routine? Absolutely not. It's only going to benefit you and give you bigger arms. Like, I think that's the smartest possible thing that you could do right now. Mix calisthenics with a little bit of weights. I'm a big fan of doing that. Now, there are exercises like uh, the bodyweight tricep extension that you can isolate your arms with. And there's some ways that you can make like inverted rows, more bicep focus. So those are good exercises to do as well. But I do believe that if you isolate your arms with weights, like you're going to see much better gains. So yeah, definitely do some push down, do some curls. It's only going to make your muscles bigger as a calisthenics athlete. So great idea. I like the fact that you are non-biased, my friend. Wishing you the best of gains. Cutting as a teenager unsafe? Well, I certainly would not recommend it unless you are morbidly obese. If you're a teenager that has very, very high body fat percentage, then you need to cut because uh, that in itself is not a healthy state. But assuming you're in a regular range, let's say you have visible abs, but you're not shredded, or you just, your flat stomach, no need to cut, I would focus on bulking. As a matter of fact, most teenagers can easily consume 3,200 calories in a day, and it's not going to do anything. It's like they're not going to gain fat from it because their body is still growing. So that's the thing. You need to be focusing on growth, on reaching your maximum height, on making sure everything develops the proper way. Don't be trying to be Mr. Shredded, Mr. Super Lean. Trust me, now is not the time to be doing that. You want to focus on your growth. That comes number one. So I think all teenagers should be bulking. They should be in a calorie surplus, focusing on their growth and getting bigger in the process. Trust me, it will benefit you much more. And of course, my advice is for recreational teenagers who are not guys who compete like uh, in football or whatever, like competitive level where you kind of have to um, subject yourself to certain risks. So for optimal health, for optimal growth, don't be cutting. That's just what I think. Curious to know if stomach vacuums would be a good exercise to help strengthen the abdominal uh, muscles and help in heavy compound movements. Well, doing tummy vacuums will give you that nice sunken effect. It's what the old school bodybuilders used to have, but I don't think it's going to help your performance in a major type of way. Like it's not going to make you a better deadlifter or better squatter. Like uh, it's, it's just not specific enough. I feel that a static ab exercise, like a zerker hold, or weighted plank would be far superior. Even spinal flexion in the form of uh, standing cable crunches. Much better options compared to uh, what you're trying to suggest. So yeah, I would still do the tummy vacuum just because it gives you that nice effect. You know, and it could trim your waist down a little bit. So if you're up at a 36, you might get down to 34 doing tummy vacuum. So for the illusion strategy and looking better as a whole, definitely incorporate it. But I think that you need to do static abs with heavy weights. And spinal flexion if you want to maximize your ab development. I just, I don't feel that vacuums will be specific enough. So yeah, next question. Should I be doing the same number of curls as extensions to keep healthy elbows? Or can I get away with doing more extensions and curls? Yeah, I would do more, more curls and extensions or keep it at the same. Uh, because it's just going to be healthier for your elbows as a whole. Like extensions, it puts a lot of stress. And you have to rejuvenate that area by working the opposite side. It's similar to how a lot of guys do a lot of pushes, but they do no pulls. Result is that they develop muscular imbalances and a bunch of joint pain. So I think that for the structural integrity, you should be doing an equal amount. Like for every extension, you should do a curl. It just makes the most sense. And this is what you see in a lot of our arm days, by the way. It's, it's a curl, extension, curl, extension, all the way to the end. So match it or do more curls because curls do keep your elbows healthy. They're very important to do if you're doing a lot of extensions. And at the same time, I'd recommend you take some bands, put on top of your door. High reps, man. High reps. You want to do it like 100 to 300 reps, man. You're going to feel those elbows feeling healthy. But yeah, if you're going to do a lot of extensions, make sure to do a lot of curls. Bottom line. Your opinion on Zerker box squats and front box squats, pros and cons. It's a great thing to do. A lot of guys believe that the box squat can only be executed if the bar is on your back. But that's false. You can box squat in any position. You can box squat in the front position and the Zerker. And these are very, very good exercises. In fact, the front box squat eliminates the problem of bending too far forward. In fact, you can use the same technique as your back squat with a front version because you can sit back. 
You see, if you try sitting back on the front free squat, it's not going to work as effectively. You have to bend your knees a lot more forward. So that's why with the box, it allows you to replicate the exact same form as your classic box squat. It's a really, really, really good exercise. So give it a shot. And the, ver the Zerker version, same benefits. I don't see why you can't Zerker squat off a box. It's, uh, it might be a little bit awkward when you're coming up. Like you might have a tendency to round off it uh, because of the position it puts you in, but it's still a great lift. I used to do those in the past as well. So two of my favorite exercises, to be honest with you, and I strongly recommend that you do these movements off a box. Why not? As an intermediate, how can I grow my bicep the fastest by running natural enhance without snapping my shit? I want to become really strong on the strict curl. Thanks. Well, you read the book, right? 458 pages. I instruct you on how to get stronger on any exercise. All you have to do on your intensity day, you do low rep curls, okay? Ideally, like the strict barbell curls, something very, very heavy, right? Then on your volume days, you do curls in the form of volume, high repetitions. And each week, you're going to rotate the curling variation, all the movements which I show you in the special exercise uh, section, and your curl will get stronger. And then your biceps will hypertrophy as a nice side effect. So that's how it works. You do volume work, intensity work, you rotate different types of curls, Boom, you get bigger and stronger. Very simple. Next question. We're doing neck extensions with the neck harness three times a week with progressive overload build your neck or would the front neck be lagging? I think that this would not be optimal for uh, neck development, but you will see really good results. Neck extensions have a profound effect because you can use very heavy weights. It stretches out the entire neck, really, and it's probably the most important movement that you could do, in my opinion, anyway. Some guys will see the neck curl, but for me... I find that heavy neck extensions are really where it's at. It also builds the upper traps and upper back. So you're going to see development. You're definitely going to see your traps coming up. The back of your neck is going to widen. You're going to see some neck gains. But you might develop headaches and postural issues. And of course, you're not going to maximize the development. So I recommend if you want to maximize the development, then you want to do neck curl, so neck flexion, <clears throat> then neck extension, all right? Do those two things and you'll benefit the most. So yeah, next question. Why does pause benching hurt my left shoulder? I'd say my form is pretty good and I never go past 90%. Well, it's not about going past 90%. Some guys get snapped up with submaximal weight. In fact, I would say most injuries occur with submaximal weight rather than using the max effort method. All right. So if you're having shoulder pain, one side, and you say that it's not a technique issue, then it has to do with muscular imbalances. And in that case, I recommend you check out my video, How to Fix uneven pecs because most of the advice in that video will apply to you you probably have one lat that is wider than the other you probably have weak rotators basically you have structural issues that is giving you pain here it's not the form necessarily although your form might be off that's certainly possible but i would more so be inclined to say that you have weaknesses that need to be corrected so watch that video how to fix uneven pecs and it's going to help you out tremendously so yeah next question what about weighted stretching for the pecs? Can you utilize it to grow your pecs? If yes, how to go about it? Using heavy dumbbells on a flat bench? Oh uh, Yeah, pretty much. If you want to get weighted stretch on your pecs, do deep range of motion exercises, okay? The best one that I can think of is the weighted dip. Weighted dips are phenomenal for building your chest. Now, it might give some people shoulder pain, and a lot of individuals are not structurally built to do the movement, but it does work wonders. So the weighted dip, any type of bench press, really, I would say the flat ball bench press, camber bar bench, pause bench, even the dumbbell press, if you go wide enough and deep enough, it's all going to build your chest. And even uh, chest flies too. If you supplement your training with chest flies, you'll notice uh, some extra chest hypertrophy gains. So yeah, weighted stretching is the key to getting jacked and uh, yeah, it applies to all muscle groups. So good luck to you. Next question. Which sport works to enhance muscles the most? By far would have to be strongman. I would say that uh, strongman is the sport that will have you looking the most jacked and getting the most strong at general strength as a natural. So yeah, strongman is, is the sport because you're doing a lot of farmer walks, builds your grip, builds your, your, your trap on your back strength. You're doing a lot of heavy pulls from various heights now, not just off the floor. No, there's the 18-inch deadlift. You just saw Eddie Hall break a record on it. Nobody called him out on that, right? So we saw the 18-inch deadlift. There's all kind, there's a Louis Seer deadlift. All kinds of different poles, uh, the squats to build up your, your posterior chain, you know, it's high exercise selection, a lot of overhead pressing to build the shoulders, um, a lot of the atlas stone stuff builds the traps, <clears throat> excuse me, there's just so many exercises to do and it's all gonna make you jacked, you know, that's why strongman competitors, the natural ones look fantastic, they have huge forms, big shoulders, 
big upper back traps, even the neck hypertrophies, especially from the stones, uh, big legs. I mean, you can't go wrong. So strongman, if you're not running my naturally enhanced program, I would say strongman is the next best thing for hypertrophying those muscles. Absolutely. Man, sorry guys about my uh, throat. I've been sick for like three days, so it's, it's hard for me to talk. Can I use a bench for box squats? Is it pretty low bench or a plow box? Uh, yeah, you can use a bench if your height allows you to, okay? Now, for me, because I'm a short man, when I box squat off a bench, it's above parallel. So I could use like 150 pounds more than what I could do below parallel. It's absolutely ridiculous. And that's why a lot of guys box squat more than they can deadlift and why they could box squat more than they could free squat. It's because the height is incorrect. The crease of the hip needs to be below the top of the knee. That's the optimal position. So that said, if you're six foot five, or you're in the six feet range, in that range, you can probably get away with this because your legs are so long that when you sit down on that box, well, you're going to be below parallel. So the only people who can get away with box squatting off a bench are those with longer legs. Bottom line, those are the only people. Otherwise, it's too much of a partial repetition. So that works. And in terms of the plow boxes, that's what I do. I adjust the plow boxes. I typically use like four of those little ones. And that gives me below parallel. Okay. So yeah. Hope that helps. Next question. Hey, Alex, can you get a wide, thick back from only deadlifts and rows? Yes, you can. Uh, rows are very, very effective for building up your back. Some people might even argue that it's better than pull-ups, you know? And based off my experience in 2016, I took an entire year off doing uh, pull-up variations. All I did was various rows and heavy pulls, and my back blew the fuck up. And I would say rows were a huge, huge, huge part of that. Rows and rack pulls, I mean, these lifts built the shit out of my back. In fact... When I started doing rack pulls above the knee, it was not for the traps. I actually started doing them for the upper back because that's what I felt the most. My upper back would get so trashed from doing them. But then I discovered that it was actually a really good trap builder. So heavy pulls and rows are absolutely phenomenal. That, that is the best way to build your back. And yeah, deadlifts uh, do work your upper back, especially if you use a snatch grip. Are they optimal? No, I say absolutely not. Uh, there's too much posterior chain involved. And you put yourself at a greater risk of injury. And you're not really hitting the upper back hard, particularly. It's a general strength movement. Obviously, you're going to see gains. But I would much rather you doing uh, rack pulls. But if your question is, can you get a big back with pulling and rowing variations? Then I would say yes. Right? Absolutely. That is the number one way of doing so. Thoughts on above parallel box squat. Uh, that's a great exercise for sprinters and those who are trying to raise the vertical jump. Because when you do a vertical jump, you don't go that deep. It's a quarter squat. You do a quarter squat and then you jump up. Uh, strength is joint angle specific. And that's why a lot of these football players are doing half squats or they're doing um, pin squats, with like very high pin squats, you know? And actually, Ben Johnson used to do a lot of high box squats. And I'm pretty sure that Usain Bolt does the same thing, right? The box squat <clears throat> breaks up the eccentric concentric chain, right? Works the posterior chain tremendously. And uh, it mimics the joint angle of sprinting and, and uh, vertical jumping. Sprinting, you're not uh, going ass to grass. So it's about specificity here, and uh, the above parallel box squat is perfect for that purpose. It is amazing, and I'd much rather you do a high box squat than a quarter squat, because quarter squats will destroy your knees. So the two best ways to overload, right, and get that carryover is to do pin squats and high box squats. That's how you get the sport-specific carryover without getting injured. Next question. Should I have lumbar rounding while performing the stiff-legged deadlift? Uh, no, you should not. However, you could round the upper back. That is fine. You could round the upper back, but not the lower back. Lower back has to be tight. Otherwise, you might have an injury. So if you can't do stiff like a deadlift without rounding your lower back, there's a problem. But upper, you could round. Alex, what are your beard goals now? I know before you said you really liked the Viking look and you wanted a long beard, but lately it looks like you've been keeping your beard trim. Yeah, that's pretty much what I've been doing these past couple months. I would trim it down just to have that density, but it wasn't like bushy or full like I used to have it right and you can check out uh, my older videos to see what it used to look like there but yeah I, I will be growing out the full beard again I've experimented a lot with my beard I've been trying things out to see what looks the best and I find that um there are two looks that work very nicely right when I have like a lot of uh fullness but it's kept like trim like especially around the neck area so it's not overdone not overly bushy and then the full-on like you know the big look those are the two looks that I like and uh, right now, I'm craving that look again, the, the, the full, like, Viking beard effect. So I will be growing out my beard. I'm not going to be trimming it. I want to get it nice and long, nice and full, especially now since I have a lot more terminal hairs, especially around the connectors. 
I think it's going to look pretty cool. So, so expect to see me with a long beard once again. And um, will I trim it again in the future? Who knows? I can't answer that, but I am growing out my beard again in addition to my eyebrows and even my head hair. And if you want clarification on that, I could uh, elaborate. So yeah, next question. And last question of the week. Hey, Alex, you mentioned you have been skipping the neck training. What do you think is the reason behind things like this happening to you or lifters in general? I see a lot of guys that want a bigger body part, yet they don't focus on it. Honestly, it's just uh, laziness. It's laziness and uh, we feel like we don't have to do it, all right? Especially when we factor in uh, social conditioning and stuff like that. So for the neck, like, I just didn't feel like doing it, man. Because the thing with me is that I have to go to the gym every time I have to train my neck and it's fucking annoying, you know? Uh, I'd rather just do my mini home workout and leave it at that. So that's what I was doing. I was doing my, my bands for the push downs, the curls and the good mornings and all that stuff. But I was skipping the neck completely. And then during my training day, I would just, I would do my bench press. I would do my rows and I would just fucking leave. In fact, I didn't do yoke training for a very long time, right? I was very lazy on the yoke training. So it's just laziness, you know? And then we get cocky too. We feel that we can maintain our size without training hard and, <laughs> You start to realize very quickly that, yeah, your size is going down, bro. Like, I lost a lot of size on my neck since I stopped training it. Uh, nowadays, I started back again. So, I'm officially, I'm at the gym. I'm doing my neck harness work, all that stuff. I'm going to get it back to my previous size, which you can check out in my older videos. But I think it just it comes down to laziness. That's why guys don't train their neck and other body parts. Like, everybody wants bigger calves, or I'm sure a lot of people do, but nobody trains them. They don't want to train their fucking calves. So, it's the same thing with the neck. Like... You just don't feel like it. And, and you have to ask yourself, is uh, raising your neck extension going to improve your bench press? Probably not. So a lot of guys, they get too specific. They get lazy. They get fucking cocky. And then they stop training the muscle groups. But yeah, that's that's what it is. And uh, I think it was stupid of me to do that. Although I did acquire some knowledge from that experience, which I'll be sharing with you in some uh, future videos. But yeah, it just comes down to laziness and feeling that you can get away with it. But yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A video. Give me some more questions down below and I will answer them next week.